السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفلاة الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا أما بعد فإن خير الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار All praise is due to Allah سبحانه وتعالى we praise him, we seek help from him, we ask forgiveness from him, we seek refuge in him from our own evils and from our own sins. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, no one can misguide. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala misguides, no one can guide them to the straight path. And I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship except one God, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, alone, without any partners. And I bear witness that Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final prophet and messenger. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's peace and blessings be upon him, his family, his companions, and those who followed him until the day of judgment respected brothers in Islam. On this blissful day, as we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for forgiveness as a Muslim, as a believer, we must try to forgive each other. We must try in our life that we forgive our Muslim brothers and sisters. Fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as he should be feared, 
and be aware of him in private and pub in public. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al Ahzab, verse number 70 to 71. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وَمَنْ يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَرَسُولَهُ فَقَدْ فَازَ فَوْزًا عَظِيمًا O you who believe, keep your duty to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fear Him and speak always the truth. He will direct you to do righteous good deeds and will forgive you your sins. And whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala obeys Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger, indeed he has won a great winning. One of the important manners of the Muslim in the face of any physical or verbal abuse is to forbear and to forgive. We all believe in the infinite mercy and forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but we cannot accept but we cannot accept Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness unless we also forgive those who do wrong to us. Forgiving each other, even, even forgiving one's enemies is one of the most important Islamic teachings. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Nahl, verse number 129, وَإِنْ عَاقَبْتُمْ فَعَاقِبُوا بِمِثْلِ مَا عُوقِبْتُمْ بِهِ وَلَئِنْ صَبَرْتُمْ لَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لِلصَّابِرِينَ If you want to retaliate, then retaliate to the same degree as the injury done to you. But if you endure patiently, indeed it is better for the patient. Moreover, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to return the evil that is done to us by others, not only with good, but with the best. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Ra'ad, verse number 22, وَأَقَامُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَأَنفَقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ سِرًّا وَعَلَانِيَةً وَيَدْرَؤُونَ بِالْحَسَنَةِ السَّيِّئَةِ أُولَئِكَ لَهُمْ عُقُبَ الدَّارِ And those who are patient, seeking the pleasure of the Lord, and establish prayer, and spend from what we have provided for them secretly and publicly and prevent evil with good those who will have the bliss and respected brothers in Islam. Whether Muslims speak evil of us in our presence or behind us or they do evil to us, it is not for us to punish them. Our best course is not to do evil in return, but to do what will be best, repel the evil. We should repel or destroy evil with something that is far better. We should foil hatred with love. We should repel ignorance with knowledge, folly and wickedness with the friendly message of revelation. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shura, verse number 40, وَجَزَاءُ سَيِّئَةٍ سَيِّئَةٌ مِثْلُهَا فَمَنْ عَفَا وَأَصْلَهَا فَأَجْرُهُ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُحِبُّ الظَّالِمِينَ The recompense for an injury is an injury equal to it in degree. But if a person forgives and makes reconciliation 
his reward is due from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For he subhanahu wa ta'ala loves not those who do wrong, respected brothers in Islam. This way, the person who was in sin, and not only liberate him from sin, but make him your greatest friend and helper in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Fussilat, verse number 34. <laughs> The good deed and the evil deed cannot be equal. Repel the evil with that which is better. Allah ordered the faithful believers to be patient at the time of anger and to excuse those who treat them badly. Then verily he between whom and you there was enmity will become a close friend. If we forgive and return the evil with good, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will love us and reward us. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Qasas, verse number 54, <laughs> These will receive double reward because they are patient and they repel evil with good and spend in charity out of what we have provided them respected brothers in Islam. The Holy Quran makes it clear that a strong, adverse, emotional reaction such as anger does not befit the true believer and instead cites as a mark of excellence the quality of forgiveness. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Shura, verse number 37, وَإِذَا مَا غَضِبُوهُمْ يَغْفِرُونَ When they become angry, they are forgiving. If he becomes angry with his brother, the true Muslim restrains his anger and is quick to forgive him and does not see any shame in doing so. Rather, he sees it as a good deed that will bring him closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his love, which he bestows only on those who do good. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Imran, verse number 134, <laughs> Those who spend in the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala during ease and hardship and who restrain anger and who pardon and forgive the people. Indeed, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves the righteous one. The true Muslims whose heart is truly attached to the teachings of Islam does not harbor good. If he restrains his anger, he then follows that with forgiveness and therefore he will be among those who do good. Anger is very difficult to restrain, for it is a heavy burden on the person's heart. But when a person forgives another person, this heavy burden is lifted, freeing him, suiting him, and bringing peace of mind. These are the feelings of al-ihsan, goodness, which the Muslims feels when he forgives his brother or sister. The true Muslim is forgiving towards his brother or sister purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He hopes thereby to earn the honor 
with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam as he referred to in the, in, the, in the authentic hadith as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said no one forgives no one forgives but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increases his honor respected brothers in Islam anger has no place in the heart of a sensitive Muslim who truly understands his religion he realizes the value of forgiveness and purity of heart and their significance if he seeks Allah's forgiveness as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam explained in Sahih al-Bukhari there are three sins there are three sins whoever dies free of these sins will be forgiven for anything else if Allah wills associating anything with Allah practicing black magic and bearing resentment towards his brothers وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يذلل فلا هادي له أما بعد respected brothers in Islam the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was the most forgiving person he was always every day everywhere ready to forgive his enemies when he went to Taif to preach the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala its people mistreated him they abused him and they threw stones at him he left the city wounded soon after leaving when he took shelter under a tree the angels of mountains visited him and offered that he uses the mountains surrounding Taif to destroy them despite all of his injuries the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam prayed to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save the people of Taif instead because what they did was out of ignorance. As he said, Allahumma hdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamoon. O oh Allah, O oh Allah, guide these people because they did not know what they were doing. A few years later, when he entered the city of Mecca after the victory, the Prophet Wasallam had in front of him some of his enemies, those who had fought him for many years and killed many of his companions. Now he had full power to do whatever he wanted to punish them for their crimes that they did. It is reported that the Prophet Wasallam asked them, what do you think I shall do to you now? They pledged for mercy. The Prophet wasallam said, No blame on to you today. No, no blame on you today. You, go you are all free. Soon they all came to accept Islam at this at his hands. Respected brothers in Islam, Islam emphasizes justice and calls for punishment of the wrongdoers, but it equally strongly emphasizes mercy, kindness, and love. Of course, justice, law, and order are necessary for the maintenance of a social order, but there is also a need for forgiveness to cure the wounds and to restore good deeds, good relations among people. We must keep in mind that as much as we need Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's forgiveness for our own sins and our mistakes, we must also practice forgiveness towards those who do wrong to us, respected brothers in Islam. The Muslim who truly understands the teachings of his religion is gentle, friendly, and likable. He mixes with people and gets along with them. This is something that should be the characteristic of a Muslim who understands that keeping in touch with people 
and earning their trust is one of the most important duties of a Muslim. There are many ahadith which commands the type of a person who is friendly and liked by others. Such a person is one of those who are beloved by the Prophet wasallam and will be closest to him on the day of resurrection. As the Prophet wasallam said, Shall I not tell you who among you is the most beloved to me and will be closest to me on the day of resurrection? He repeated it two and three times. And then they said, Yes, O Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, those of you who are the best in attitude and in character. Narrated by Ahmed. In the end, I would like to pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us forgive others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand according to the Quran and the sunnah of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single person. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our elders. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our youngsters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our mothers and sisters. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every single Muslim. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us understand according to the Quran and the teaching of our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We have an announcement in the end. The Hadith Lecture 5, questions the son of Adam, will be held on Sunday, 9th February 2020 at 3 p.m. Brothers and sisters are welcome here in Islamic Bookshop in Coventry here. So I would like and request all our brothers and sisters to attend this class. Inna Allah wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala nabi Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama sallayta ala Ibrahim wa ala ali Ibrahim innaka Hamidum Majid Allahumma barik ala Muhammad wa ala ali Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim وَعَلَىٰ آلِ إِبْرَاهِيمَ إِنَّكَ حَمِيدٌ مَجِيدٌ اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين وذل الكفرة والملحدين ودمر أعداء الدين وانصر عبادك الموحدين وانصر عبادك المخلصين وانصر عبادك المؤمنين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين واجعلنا للمتقين إماما ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربك رب العزة أما يسفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أقيم الصلاة Please straighten your lines and don't leave any gaps. 
الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا سبح اسم ربك الأعلى الذي خلق فسوى والذي قدر فهدى والذي أخرج المرعى فجعله ثاء أحوى سنقرئك فلا تنسى إلا ما شاء الله إنه يعلم الجهر وما يخفى ونيسرك لليسرى فذكر إن نفعت الذكرى سيذكر من يخشى ويتجنبها الأشقى الذي يصل النار الكبرى ثم لا يموت فيها ولا يحيا قد أفلح من تزكى وذكر اسم ربه فصلى بل تؤثرون الحياة الدنيا والآخرة خير وأبقى إن هذا لفي الصحف الأولى صحف إبراهيم وموسى الله أكبر سمي الله لمن حمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين هل أتى
أتاك حديث الغاشية وجوه يومئذ خاشعة عاملة ناصبة تصلى نارا حامية تسقى من عين آنية ليس لهم طعام إلا من ضريع لا يسمن ولا يغني من جوع وجوه يومئذ ناعمة لسعها راضية في جنة عالية لا تسمع فيها لاغية فيها عين جارية فيها سرر مرفوعة وأكواب موضوعة ونمارق مسفوفة وذرابي مبثوثة أفلا ينذرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سُتِحَتْ فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمصيتر إلا من تولى وكفر فيعذبه الله العذاب الأكبر إن إلينا إيابهم ثم إن علينا حسابهم الله أكبر